and welcome back to Ochima Wolf Collection. Thank you so much for coming back to watch my videos. You guys are amazing. I say it every time. I mean it every time. Today's video is going to be kind of like, I'm going to talk about how I got started as a collector, like my collecting beginnings, like what pushed me to this status today. I get asked all the time, you know, like, why are you a collector? How did you become a collector? When did you become a collector? And I'm going to answer all of those questions in today's video, as well as show you guys what I've been buying lately. So it's going to be a little bit of both, how I became a collector and also what I've been buying since the last time I checked in with you guys. Before we begin, I want to say a special welcome to everybody who's been subscribing lately. Thank you guys so much for those subs. I keep going up and up and up. We're almost to 18,000. It's wild. Thank you guys so much for hitting that subscribe button and joining the pack here. For those who are brand new, this is the first video you've ever watched on my channel. And maybe you're trying to get the vibe, get the feel of what Ochiba Wolf Collection is about. My name is Brooke. I'm a long term toy collector, uh, mainly specializing in Sailor Moon, but I also collect Disney, um, some My Little Pony, some Pokemon, other anime as well. And this channel is all about what I buy and what I display in my collection room. So if you guys are into that, please consider subscribing and help me get to 18,000. And then shortly after, my next goal will be 20,000. I can't wait till we get there. We're gonna do a huge giveaway when I hit that milestone. Let's go ahead and talk about like how I became a collector, how I came to have an entire bedroom filled wall to wall with collectibles. And really guys, I always tell everybody, I realized I was a collector and I told everybody that I was a collector in 2006. Like that was like my, I, I like to tell people that was my collection beginning, like the true beginning, because I realized what I was doing. I was buying toys not to play with them or anything like that. I was strictly collecting them. And at that time, I really, really loved buying mint in sealed box items and preserving them. So though that year is when I officially became a collector in my own terms. So 2006, you guys, I've been collecting since 2006 officially. Now I may have to do a video on when I became a Sailor Moon fan in that journey too, because that's completely different. Of course, I was a Sailor Moon fan before 2006. So um, the way that I became a Sailor Moon fan and when I became a collector, they're two different stories. I will definitely talk about how I became a Sailor Moon fan in another video, but this video is all about like how I just became obsessed with collecting figures, toys, and collectibles. It does kind of go back before 2006, and I'll uh, tell you guys just a little bit what I mean. So prior to 2006, you know, I was a kid. <laughs> and growing up and loving cartoons, of course, every kid loves cartoons. Um, I did own some toys, but at that time, of course, I was playing with them. You know, I wasn't collecting them. I was a little, I was a little kid. I, I just loved toys like any other kid. As I got a little bit older, like, I want to say my uh, early teenage years, uh, some of my collectibles I still held on to that I felt more attached to. For instance, I had the bootleg petite soldiers from Sailor Moon prior to 2006 and I, I like proudly displayed those in my room as a, as a young teenager. At that time, I didn't consider myself a collector. I wasn't actively going out and buying, you know, a lot of toys. Um, to display. So this was just something that I had from my childhood. And also at that time, especially when I was younger, we had an Asian shop that my parents would take us to. And they had a lot of officially licensed Sailor Moon products from overseas, like the Korean merchandise, for example. And that's how I acquired the Korean Star Locket or the Starry Sky Orgle. And I held on to some of these items well into my early teens. Well, <laughs> And I, I started going back and looking at my socials because around that time, social media and websites and communities and forums and, you know, role playing sites were, were really ramping up. And um, during that time, that's when I when I found out about a lot of these communities. Well, it was shortly after graduating high school in 2006. You know, I was 18. I was you know, transitioning into being a young adult. I was actually accepted into a few colleges. So I was like really focused on, you know, my studies and going to college at that time. And so back in summer 2006, 
you know, I was going through my room and I discovered I still had a lot of my Sailor Moon items from when I was a kid. And I was like, you know what? You know, I can't trash them. I can't, you know, sell them at a garage sale or anything like that. What about if I put some of them on eBay and see if somebody else, you know, would, you know, give me 10, 20 bucks for them. And I'm talking about, this was like some really good stuff, like the Korean star locket, like I mentioned, and some other Korean items. Um, and I think I, I think some bootlegs too, you know, at the time, you know, I didn't really know much about bootlegs. So I put those on eBay and I remember I made a blog post in 2006 from my art account saying, hey, if you guys are Sailor Moon fans, I have some Sailor Moon merchandise that I'm going to be selling on eBay, you know, go throw in a bid if you are interested in any of that. And again, I didn't think I'd be getting any kind of like good money from these auctions. I just wanted to make sure since I still loved Sailor Moon, I was still a fan. I just wasn't focusing on anime at that time in my life. I wanted to, you know, to make sure they went to somebody that would cherish them instead of just, you know, chuck them, chucking them at a garage sale or donating them. I started out the bids really low, okay? Like I think it was like 99 cents, you know? And this was the Korean Star Locket. I remember this like it was yesterday. I put it on eBay. I just watched hour by hour it go up and up and up and up into like almost $300. And this was 2006, you guys. I had just graduated high school. $300 at the time was so much money and I was shocked. And I lived with my parents at the time and I was like, you guys, I just, you know, chucked this old to the moon toy up on eBay. It's almost to $300. What's going on? You know, I, it really shook my world. I mean, I, it's, it's embedded in my memory so well. And my memory as like from when I was at high school, middle school and beyond is very spotty, but certain things um, on my timeline, I remember like it was yesterday and this is one of them. And I'm trying to think about how I was thinking about it at the time. Of course, um, whoever won it, I don't know who it was. I shipped it off. I got rid of it. And over the next couple of months, because this was summer 2006, I remember just thinking, I'm, I kept thinking like, somebody really wanted this toy. You know, actually, I want to say like 20 or 30 people really wanted this toy because they were outbidding each other left and right. Like I had tons of bids on this thing. Um, it was more than one person bidding on it. And I'm like, are there people out there that really love Sailor Moon this much to want to spend, you know, almost $300 on an item? And so that got me thinking. And later in 2006, you know, I want to say fall or the winter, I got back into it. I started because, I, you know, it sparked some curiosity. And I, and I started, you know, looking into um, the communities of Sailor Moon that were out there at the time. And that's, I think, around 2006, 2007, I discovered um, Live Journal. I discovered, um, what else did I discover? There were some forums, like some Sailor Moon forums out there. And I cannot, for the life of me, remember the names. But I started really digging in because, of course, I was still a Sailor Moon fan. So, it, it, to me, I, I just really wanted to know who these people were who were spending so much money on Sailor Moon. Later in 2006, and, and especially into 2007, I discovered my people and I found people who had kept all of their childhood Sailor Moon items from back in the day and they cherished them so much and the stories that they told about them and the photos that they showed about how proud and and they just the just I just couldn't believe you know how how amazingly they talked about their collections because after I graduated high school you know I was focusing on being a normal adult I was gonna go to college and, you know, pursue a career in graphic design, so I thought. And so, you know, I didn't really think anything about, you know, anime back, or anymore. I, I definitely was still a fan, uh, but, you know, I, it was different back then. It was different back then, especially in your local communities. You didn't find a lot of people who were into it. I, at least in my case, it was kind of suppressed uh, by the time that I uh, graduated uh, high school, and so, you know, collecting and watching anime really wasn't like my priority at the time until I chucked those Sailor Moon items on eBay and I got to thinking over the next couple of months after that and then I found those communities and then I found my people. That's when I finally felt accepted and where it was okay in, in these particular communities to shout from the rooftops that you still love Sailor Moon after, you know, you are legal after your illegal age and you can still collect toys and be proud of them at any age. And you guys, look where I'm at today. It was like... It just kept going and going. I haven't stopped since 2006 to 2023, you guys. 
um, this is where I'm at. I own my own home. I dedicated in one entire room in my home to my collection. But I kind of want to talk about the time in between from 2006 to today because I definitely had some pivotal moments um, and turning points up till 2023 that <laughs> really are interesting and I think that you guys um, might want to know. How many of you guys out there remember Tumblr? I know it's still around, but it's completely different than uh, back in the day. And when I say back in the day, I think I started my Tumblr in 2011 and I'm not sure if that was the year that Tumblr even came about or if it came out before that, but 2011 is when I started my Tumblr account. And then also I was on LiveJournal. Those were like the two communities, Tumblr and LiveJournal, that really were my collecting beginnings. Those were the places where I posted the most and I connected with other collectors and other Sailor Moon fans um, at the time. And you guys, I still have my Ochiba Wolf Tumblr today and I actually went back all the way back to 2011 to reference some of my older posts and my older collection photos <laughs> to see uh, where I came from. Cause you know, as you grow up and you move on, I don't know, I, I'm a little different. My memory is very spotty and thank goodness for our older social medias that are still around that we can go back and reference so to me I'm so happy that they're still active and up and you know tumblr didn't get rid of them I was able to go back all the way back to 2011 and recall all of the moments in my collecting journey 2011 was a huge huge year um, for Sailor Moon things started to ramp up. So 2011 was the year, and I'm not sure how many of you guys remember, but 2011, Italy, the country, got uh, merchandising rights for Sailor Moon again. So they released a lot of merchandise. They released dolls, they released clothing, they released sticker books, coloring books. They had roller skates at some point, and it was all marketed toward kids. So that 2011, um, odd Sailor Moon merchandise time in Italy. It was strange because they were trying to sell children's merchandise for Sailor Moon once again because back in the 90s they also were really big. They got like a lot of the Bondi releases in Italy under a different name but they were essentially the same toys reboxed from Japan. Um, so Italy was was pretty big in the Sailor Moon timeline as far as goods and merchandising go. So in 2011 they started back up and they re-released not re-released they came out with new merchandise for sailor moon and of course sailor moon collectors were all over it we were looking at places where we could import the new stuff especially the dolls we were really ecstatic about the dolls i once had every single one of those um brand new 2011 italian dolls um, unfortunately they did get sold <laughs> in my uh, later collection years i did a lot of like trading up is what I like to call it if I stopped liking something as much or if I would rather have something else and you know I wasn't made of money I would sell something to buy something that I wanted more and that's what happened with those dolls and of course I have regrets I wish I had those 2011 Italian dolls still but I did have a lot of the Italian merchandise and it was all because there was a site that was based out of Italy that shipped worldwide and it was called Muscara and I remember really pushing <laughs> Muscara in the Sailor Moon communities uh, back in 2011. I mean I made uh, graphics that was pushing the moon stick that got re-released in 2011 in Italy and I was like you know support the Italian Sailor Moon merchandise by buying the moon stick from Muscara. I mean I have that freaking picture from my uh, Tumblr account and when I went back and looked at my 2011 tumblers I was like look at me I'm still doing what I did back then today I'm still pushing Sailor Moon merchandise and pushing the fandom to you know uh, buy a figure or two or a proplica of, or two um, to support the franchise but I was doing that back in 2011 as well um, it was really cute seeing you know Middle Brook back then trying to get everybody to buy from this Italian website <laughs> Do you guys remember the Italian moonstick? I actually still have it. I just don't know where it is in my collection, but I did hold on to that Italian version. Um, it basically was a re-release of the um, one from the 90s, and we also got the... Did we get the Irwin one? I, yes, we did. It was just a re repackaged release of that same toy. <laughs> Let me know if you guys got that, or even if you remember Muscara. I don't even know if they're still around. Post-production, we will have to go back and look and see if their site is still around selling merchandise out of Italy. But they were they were the big ones. They were they were probably one of the only places that you could 
uh, by the Italian Sailor Moon merchandise at that time. And I mean, that wasn't a reseller or, you know, a personal seller on eBay. 2011 was also the year Hot Topic started releasing Sailor Moon clothing again. We had a plethora of new shirts that came out that year. I have documentation of this on my live journal and on Tumblr, which is cool. I'm so glad we still have access to those, like I said. Um, 2011 was also the year Kodansha announced that they were going to be bringing the Sailor Moon manga officially to North America. They said that they were gonna do their a whole brand new translation. Those are what we call the 2011 editions. Uh, volume one of Sailor Moon and Codename Sailor V were coming out in 2011. So, you know, it really started to get really big for Sailor Moon in 2011. I remember Hot Topic also released uh, an official Sailor Moon costume that year by Leg Avenue. I remember there was a lot of controversy when that costume came out, but it was cool. We were getting officially licensed merchandise once again and clothing in adult sizes. Like us Sailor Moon fans were ecstatic. And of course in 2011, I lived in my parents' basement. I didn't have a mortgage. I didn't have to pay internet bill or not even my phone bill. I'm pretty sure my parents were paying my phone bill at that time. So all of my money, because I did have jobs, <laughs> multiple jobs, went towards collecting. So these early years in my collecting journey, uh, I, I was able to get the bulk of my collection. A lot of people like to assume that I bought all of this in one day or in a year. And, you know, I always get told that I'm rich. I'm not rich. If I was rich, you guys, I'd be living in a $400,000 house, okay? I don't. <laughs> um, but... But the point is, I'm not rich. This stuff did not accumulate over a year, over a week, over a day. This stuff has been accumulating since 2006. Some of this merchandise that I have today is from 2006. So during the years that I lived in my parents' basement, those early years um, from 2006 and on, all my paycheck from the all the various jobs I was working went towards collecting, basically. Every, I, in 2011, I also started collecting a lot more Disney dolls. Um, Sailor Moon kind of um, <laughs> was kind of the gateway to a lot of other things. Actually, uh, can I backtrack that? Beanie Babies was the gateway of being a collector. Does anybody remember being a kid collecting Beanie Babies? I know a lot of you guys who watch my channel, you guys are around the same age as I. So you did get exposed to Beanie Babies and I feel like Beanie Babies was definitely like the precursor of where I'm at today. I was obsessed over Beanie Babies and of course, you know, they did not hold their value and I had to basically give them away. <laughs> Nobody was buying those, but um, yeah, I really do believe Beanie Babies, that blip on my freaking timeline caused this today. <laughs> But uh, that's that's besides the point. Um, 2011 really was was a big year for me. Like I was saying, I got into Disney dolls. And um, if you guys are also like some of you guys watching my videos, if you guys also collect Disney dolls, and if you also collected like back in 2011, you guys will will remember the uh, designer doll situation from the Disney store when Disney stores were still around in the United States. Uh, we called it Doll Mageddon. Um, in the fall of 2011. I have a whole blog of what happened to my friends and I during Dalmageddon in 2011. If you guys want to check it out, I have a link below. It's on my blog spot uh, journal. But basically, that was before the term scalper came about. At least I didn't know about the term. But for Dalmageddon, uh, Disney Store was releasing the last five of the, the very first designer dolls all at once at a Disney store. And I remember we had to camp out overnight um, at a mall in, o I think it was Oklahoma City because we didn't have a Disney store in Wichita, Kansas. And we had to outrun 40 year old men at the time for Disney dolls. And we absolutely knew they were going to be resold on eBay because they were whispering and they were saying, do you know how much this goes for? on ebay we're gonna make so much money i mean you guys just have to, i'm not gonna go too much in detail about dalmageddon but go ahead and read my blog i wrote all about it i think in 2012 and the experience that my friends and i had over that but that's like i feel like man 2011 must have it's such a pivotal year because you know i grew as a collector but also um scalpers were more prevalent 
because of Disney dolls and it just got worse and worse over the years. Oh my gosh, just having this natural organic chit chat with you is just bringing back a lot of memories. So I'm sorry if my thoughts and discussions are all over the place. <laughs> Definitely let me know if you guys remember Dalmageddon of 2011. It was wild. The next year, 2012. Oh, 2012. So 2012, I went even harder. I was making a little bit more working my jobs that I was doing and I got into Monster High. Oh, I loved Monster High so much at one point. I still really like the franchise. I just, I'm just not a collector in it anymore. I got really hard into Monster High and also My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. I really love, I got into the reboot really hard and started collecting all of that as well. And I no longer collect My Little Pony Friendship is Magic anymore either. I did sell all of my stuff. Um, but I was really hard into it at one point. 2012 was also the very start of the 20th anniversary of Sailor Moon um, when uh, Kodansha Toy Animation announced their projects and that they were coming out um, with the Sailor Moon SH figure arts. And then that other figure, can't remember the name of that figure, that never got a release. I wish they did. Look at that. Isn't that so cute? But that was um, a big year for Sailor Moon fans in 2011 when they started announcing all the 20th anniversary pro uh, projects and products. And oh my gosh, you guys have been going strong ever since. There's been no chill, no stop so much stuff we are all buried alive or at least i know i am <laughs> yeah i feel like since 2011 2012 things have been go 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 bank account is low 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 <laughs> but that's basically my collecting beginnings you guys um i think i did i go into detail at the beginning of this video of why i loved toys so much i don't think i did so let me backtrack just a little bit as a kid I was different than the other kids in terms of what everybody was into. And I only mean different like in my area. In my area and the kids around me, they were into Barbies, they were into Hot Wheels, they were into those kind of popular toys. I was really into animals, um, like My Little Pet Shop, My Little Pony. And then later I really, like after I discovered Sailor Moon, and all the other animes out there i got into anime and at the time you guys during those years anime was not cool anime was not popular it was not the cool thing to be into so i always felt like an outcast but the one thing that i knew and that was true and totally me was that i loved these toys and as a kid i held on to my toys way longer i feel like than i should have like and, and, and i'm not trying to say like that's how you should be but at the time that's what your parents and people around you expected you today i'm so glad we have a lot more like acceptance when it comes to like what kids are into and what they can stay into but back then it was like oh your 12 year old daughter still has a bucket full of my little pet shop shouldn't she be getting you know into makeup or you know more serious about her studies you know but i was really proud of my toys so i always always had a love for toys and I really believe I was influenced um, not only by my peers at school and the people around me and my parents even, because you know, I didn't have anybody that was really a nerd or a geek around me. So, you know, it's there, there is that sense that, you know, you want to conform, you want to fit in, especially at that age. So I did feel like I tried to push that side of me away and tried to, you know, bury it. And that's where, you know, right after I graduated from high school, I decided, you know, to get real serious and to, you know, just get rid of some anime stuff that I still had. You guys, it didn't work. It didn't work. We all know who we are deep down inside and it's going to come back to the surface one way or another. Please let me know. Um, I just shared, I mean, I shared some stuff that I haven't shared publicly and I don't think ever. I may have mentioned it in passing in a live or something, but like this is the, the most deep I've gotten in one video. So I would love to know like your guys' personal story, if it's relatable if uh, you guys felt the same way as a kid. I am 35 now, okay? So I'm talking, you know, many, many years ago, like around, you know, from, from a kid to when I was 18 to now. Yeah, I just wanna know like, if you guys had a similar journey. It doesn't matter what age you are. I know that, you know, different times, there are different expectations of kids. But like when, 
when me, my, I was born in 1988. Um, when I was a kid, it was definitely, you know, you were expected to grow out of it at some point. So I would love to hear your guys' stories if you if it's relatable for you or if it's not relatable. Maybe you were surrounded, maybe you were in the same era as me, but you were surrounded by people who supported your passions and your likes and all of that. Um, and, and you felt accepted. That was, that's amazing. I, I really wish a lot of us, you know, had, had that kind of story to tell. But I mean, I'm not saying that I had, you know, like people saying, you got to get rid of your toys. No, it wasn't like that. It's just, it was more, I noticed things around me and I felt odd. So I made the choice, you know, <laughs> but like I said, it didn't work. Look where I'm at today. I love my thing so much. Uh, just being around all of this just makes me so happy. I know you're not supposed to really be very materialistic, but I kind of am. Collectors are, let's be real. But you know what? It's okay. We're not hurting anybody with with um, owning all of these toys. It's it's really just a happiness factor. Even though I do say all the time, my room gives me anxiety. Be and that's only because it's not organized. But have, have you guys been seeing? I've been having my local friends come over and help me. And you guys, it's coming together so beautifully. Look at the display that um, my best friend Kay did. She did all of this. She couldn't believe that she got all the style dolls to fit behind me. She was so satisfied. She was like, chef's kiss. I can't believe I got them to work. And I, and I love, absolutely love what she did. And they're still going to be coming over. And Tracy as well. Tracy's been helping me do the organization on the floor. She's been such a good help. Um, and prior to all that, Lonnie came over and helped me do all my Pokemon stuff. Like, I literally have the best friends in the world. And all because of collecting. All because of my fandoms. All because of anime and, and Disney and cartoons. And, like, nothing but happiness has come from being a collector and I hope that's the same for you guys I know a lot of you have come to me and said you inspire me to collect too like I don't have people around me that collect but you make me want to buy a figure or two do it do it and see how it makes you feel and don't let don't ever let anybody tell you what to feel about those kind of things because you know how you feel and you can't and don't let anyone tell you differently I hope I covered everything about my collecting journey if I didn't if you have any additional questions about like where I came from, uh, please leave them below. I'd be happy to answer them as quickly as I can. Um, but as far as that, I think that's it for that. But can I show you guys what I've been buying lately? First things first, um, I do have a non Sailor Moon item that I want to show you guys. Remember how I said I love Disney? And of course, this also ties into Beanie Babies. The company tie is of course still around and they make these uh, Simba and Nala uh, they're called Thai Sparkles and aren't they adorable? I thought they looked really good and oh, she's got a little hair on her nose But um, I thought they were really cute and these I think are some of my first, you know, technically beanie babies in a long time um, But I thought they were really cute uh, You can get these like w literally wherever uh, Thai is sold. I got them I think at a local store Yeah, called Toy Time in Kansas City. Uh, Kurt and I took a Kansas City trip just to, you know, de-stress and uh, get away from the boys for a while, my crazy wild cats. <laughs> and we had a great time and that's where I found these too. So I wanted to make sure I showed you guys these. And then I also went to Hot Topic, I think it was last weekend, and I got the brand new bracelet set. Let me see if I can show you guys. Um, this one just released, I think a couple weeks ago. It's, it's freaking beautiful. It's got the crisis compact on it. It's got the chibi moon compact on it. And then it has a, uh, a Luna charm as well on it. Hopefully it's picking up. Let me just pull this off. So maybe you can see it just a little bit. It's really beautiful. I'll have a link below to the hot topic, uh, link. If you guys want to grab them for yourself, it did come with another one, but the other one isn't sailor moon at all. There's no sailor moon charms on it. I wish it would have had a sailor moon charm on it because it was in the same pack. Put some charms on it, Hot Topic. I would love it if it had some charms on it. Then I'd be wearing it because I will not wear this unless it has Sailor Moon on it. You guys may have noticed my Cosmic Heart Compact ring. This is from the Sailor Moon store. Now, I didn't get this one recently, but I have recently opened it. It was actually in my collection when, when Tracy and I were on the floor organizing. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's my extra Cosmic Heart Compact ring from the Sailor Moon store. And if you guys can see, it has little gems in it that they're, sh if they're shaking. Um, and I finally uh, opened it up and put it on. And this is a really cool ring. And the reason is you guys, it can fit a lot of ring sizes. It's adjustable. Um, so if you ever wanted to grab one 
from the Sailor Moon store or secondhand. I'm not sure if the Sailor Moon store still stocks these, but it's a statement piece. It's a statement piece. Look, look at it. It's like huge <laughs> on my hand. Let me take this off so you can actually hear it. Can you guys hear it? It like has little tiny gems in it. It's really cute. So yeah, that's just a couple. That's just, I opened that up recently. So I wanted to show you. Not new, but the bracelet's definitely new. And then you guys know Hot Topic um, sells buttons uh, in their store, but they don't sell them online. So it's always up to chance and luck on what you discover when you go to your local Hot Topic or any Hot Topic in general and go through the button bin. Well, there's new Sailor Moon buttons, you guys. Um, I bought all the ones that I didn't have. Now, one of my friends went to Hot Topic a few days or a week before me and took a picture of some of their buttons. And they're like, Brooke, do you need any of these? And I was like, yes, get me that one and that one. So I haven't got those yet from her, but they did have them the second time that I, or the other time that I went to Hot Topic. So there are more than just what I have right here. I'm just waiting to meet my friend again and, and exchange the buttons. But I do want to show you, they, and again, there could be more of these out there, you guys, but um, here is a Sailor Venus. And they also have a Sailor Mars in this version. I have heard from another one of my friends that there is a Sailor Moon one as well. And I think a Mercury, I think, no, the Mercury's in the other one. Um, but so these two are in the same style, but I love that they're shaped as hearts. It's really cute. And these buttons, they run, I think $1.99. Yeah, they run $1.99. Hopefully you guys can see that. I hope it's focusing, but there's the sticker on it um, that the Hot Topic employees scan. They're $1.99, so I got those two, but my favorite one so far that I got uh, from this new wave of heart buttons are what I call the polka dot or the pop art style buttons, and they have a Super Sailor Moon one, and I think they have all of the inners because we also found Sailor Mars. We also found Sailor Mercury. That's the one my friend has, so pretend like you see it. It's in the same style with the polka dot background. And Sailor Jupiter. I think it was Venus that we haven't seen yet. But we're pretty sure that they probably make Venus at this point if we have almost everybody. But you guys always check the button bins for Sailor Moon buttons. You never know what you can find. Heck, maybe you'll find one that hasn't been discovered yet. It's always fun to, you know, dig through it and see what you can find. And, bo and be careful when you're digging because sometimes uh, the sharp point is exposed and I don't want you to get poked. So be careful digging through those button bins. At the time I bought those buttons, I had an odd number and they were having a sale buy, buy one, get one 30% off. So I was like, I want to get something 30% off. So I went back and I got one of the brand new posters. This is, I think, wave two. Yes, this is wave two uh, made by G, uh, Great Eastern Entertainment. And I want to see who we can get. So I'll kind of show you guys who you can get. I really like some of these. The ones that I are I am really wanting are the um the individual ones right here. I would love to pull one of those. I don't care which one. I like them all. Maybe not tuxedo mask. I know there are tuxedo mask fans out there, but like I don't I don't really collect them. I don't collect tuxedo mask. I mean no shade, no shade. It's just not something that I I collect. <laughs> Um, I would collect a tuxedo mask doll though. If they made a tuxedo mask style doll, I would, I would grab him for sure. So let's see who we get. So just like the last ones, I do have a video on my channel opening up a whole bunch of the, uh, wave one ones. If you guys want to see, uh, which ones I got, but they're really nice posters. So hoping we get good pulls. Oh yeah. And the posters are 11 by 17, by the way, there are 16 designs that you can potentially pull and two come in these boxes. Here we go. Let's see who we get. Let's see who we get. Okay, we got Usagi and the girls in this one. And they're glossy, by the way. So they're pretty good quality. I, I really do enjoy these posters. They're really nice. Hopefully it's not too reflective. I'll try to show you guys it right here. And here is the other one. The other one is a vertical one. Oh, I like this one. I like this one. This was the art that was on some of the primitive stuff uh the later collaboration ah nice we got the copyrights down here at the bottom that's how you know it's official you guys and yeah i think 
that's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for always watching my content. Um, I, it really does mean a lot, you guys, as I continue to grow. Please let me know what you guys think of this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already subbed. And please leave a comment of your thoughts down below. I really want to know about your guys' own collecting journey, or if you're not a collector, um, if you have any questions for me, that's fine too, you know. All the above, you guys. I'm always happy to answer any any serious questions down there below. Um, you guys, I am hosting my first panel this Friday. I'm hoping to film it so I can upload it on the channel so you guys can see how I do. I'm really nervous. I probably will only post the footage of the panel if it's good, but I really am going to do my best because this is a test panel for a very important one that I have in the fall. I can't wait to do an announcement of which anime convention I got invited to to host a Sailor Moon panel. You guys are awesome. Have a good one. I'll see you guys later. It's rattling. It's rattling. Not only is the ring rattling, but my charms are rattling. <laughs>